So in the last episode, we talked a little bit about the Spirit and Opportunity rovers, what they were made of, what instruments they had on them, and how they launched and landed onto the surface of Mars. In this episode, we're going to go a little bit more in depth for both the Spirit and Opportunity rovers and talk about what they did on Mars, what they discovered, and what obstacles they had to overcome. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what these two rovers had in common. Both of them were planned to have a 90 Sol day period, or 90 Mars day period, which is about 92.5 Earth days. Spirit landed in the Gusov crater, and Opportunity landed in a crater which would later be called Eagle. And this, these two craters are about 6,600 miles away from each other, so that's about the same distance between New York City and Dubai, just to put that into perspective. So to begin, let's talk about the story of Opportunity. What made Opportunity so special? Well, to begin, the name was actually really well fit because throughout the entire experience that Opportunity had, it had a lot of, well, opportunities. It was really lucky and a lot of things were just kind of fell into place really well, which made scientists and engineers really happy about what it was able to do. So to begin with the Eagle Crater that it landed in, that was actually considered to be a hole-in-one type of shot. The scientists and engineers didn't even know that that existed, and this crater was almost perfect for opportunity because there was a wide variety of rocks inside of the crater and sedimentary layers that allowed it to do a lot of exploration just within the first month. After Opportunity had left the Eagle Crater, it went out into the plains around it, and one of the first things that it did was it used its wheel to actually dig up some of the sand that was underneath. And what had happened once it did this is it uncovered some shiny round pebbles that you see now that had never been imaged before. Then, in 2005, about a year later, the luck continued when Opportunity Rover actually drove along the plains and found a meteorite just lying there on the surface of Mars. Later, as it continued along the far plains, it actually ran into the heat shield that helped it bring back onto the surface of Mars. But scientists and engineers were astounded by this and studied it and took samples of it just to see how long it survived the entry and how well it sustained on the impact. Opportunity had it pretty easy, mainly because after it made its way out of the craters, all it had to do was roam across a nice, smooth surface, making it pretty nice to traverse, made it easier to find random things like meteorites in the heat shield, and also would be on the cliff side of ledges so that it could take nice panoramic pictures of what was below. The Opportunity rover is still working on the surface of Mars today. As of 2015, it had actually traveled 26.2 miles, which is pretty, pheno pretty phenomenal and actually the furthest distance that a man-made object has ever traveled all on the surface of another planet or on the surface of another moon. Opportunity is currently trying to study more about the past life, whether or not Mars could have held life, and if Mars once had water on its surface. So now that we've covered Opportunity, let's talk about Spirit. So as so I mentioned before, Spirit landed in Gusov Crater, which is actually very different than where Opportunity landed. Gusov Crater is incredibly rocky, hilly, and filled of a terrain that would be almost impossible for a rover to traverse. Just a couple weeks after landing in Gusov Crater, there's actually a technical difficulty. The rover would respond, it would communicate with us, but it wouldn't do any scientific data. It wouldn't send anything back. It wouldn't perform any experiments. There was something wrong. And after two weeks, they, the scientists and engineers went through all of what could possibly happen, and it turns out it was just a computer error. The Mars rover was having an issue with storage from data handling, just like problems that you probably have on your computer or phone today. So two years later, in the summer of 2007, there was a major problem. There's a global dust storm around Mars. This one was special because since it was so big and for so long, it actually blocked out most of the sunlight that got down to the surface. It was so much that the Spirit rover was only experiencing 1% of the amount of sunlight that they would normally experience on a typical day. So what did Spirit do? It focused down, went to low power mode, and just tried to survive the summer. By doing so, it actually just barely survived, getting to the lowest point that they had ever gotten in the mission in power reserve. So then, Spirit, like Opportunity, continued to roam across the surface of Mars. But again, not in the plains like Opportunity had, but in the rough landscape near Gusov Crater. 
Now, what ended up happening was in 2009, as it was climbing up a hill, Spirit got stuck in sand. Now, this isn't the first time that it happened, but it was a little bit different just because of the orientation of how the rover was. Now, NASA had spent about a month or two trying to get itself free before a new campaign had started. The Free Spirit Campaign. Now, there was a timeline. That coming March in 2010 was going to be the beginning of another winter, which means that it would have to reserve its powers and probably stay wherever it was. And if the NASA scientists and engineers weren't able to get it out of the sand in that time frame, then most of the hope would be gone. So they spent the next couple months trying to move its way out. The time frame dwindled as NASA employees, scientists, and engineers conducted thousands of experiments to try and get spirit out of the sand. Until on March 22nd of 2010, at the beginning of the winter, we lost communication with spirit. Another year went by, we waited for the winter to end, we sent out communications just trying to get something back, and nothing had returned. So then, in May of 2011, they canceled the Spirit program. Spirit, like its name, was full of hope and ambition. Landing in a rough terrain environment and running into near devastating situations, Spirit was able to pull through and survive for five years longer than the initial planned mission. Over its lifetime, it traveled 4.78 miles and made hundreds of discoveries that have pushed people to continue to believe that we can live on the planet Mars. In this episode, we discovered the stories of the twin rovers Spirit and Opportunity. We learned about what they did on the surface, where they traveled, and what obstacles they overcame. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the Curiosity rover, and we're going to understand what it was made of, what the purpose is, and how it landed on the surface of Mars. Thank you for watching. <laughs>